the sport of grappling is headed nowhere. It, it's gone nowhere in the two plus decades that we've been aware of it. Let's start with the opening statement that the sport of grappling is headed nowhere. And in particular, this specific statement where he states that um, it has gone nowhere in the 20 plus years that we've been aware of it. I'll just shut that down right now. When the UFC first started uh, in the late 90s, and Gracie Jiu-Jitsu and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu started to expand beyond uh, the, Gracie, the Gracie's personal garages in California and across the United States and the world and so on, there has been growth. People didn't even know what this was before the first UFCs. And we'll go back even more than 20 years. We'll go 30 years into the late 80s, early 90s when they were doing the Gracie challenges in their garages. It was even more fringe back then. You start there where you've got this family that brought this martial art up to, into the United States and started challenging martial arts masters and whoever really to show their dominant martial art in their garage. Now look where we are. Look at all the events, all the organizations, uh, and everything that has expanded beyond those garages. That's a very dismissive statement to say that there hasn't been consistent and strong growth, not in the sport specifically, but in the sport and the martial art of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So they're gonna come out and they're gonna do this grappling match. Now, they're going to do it submission only, no time limit. That's a really cool thing to hardcore fans. Like, I'm not against that from an entertainment or from a business perspective, I'm not being a prude. It's not something that you can move forward. It's not, it's not something that's ever going to cut into sports center or even get a reader on the bottom third. It's simply not. So when you go into a no time, like that's something special. There's something really cool to that. At the same time, you do have a meaningful conversation of, do we have a sport? I would say, no, that was not a sport. So let's take on his second point here. Um, he's specifically talking about the Gordon Ryan match recently with Pena uh, with no time limit. Now this no time limit thing um, Flow Grappling has been doing recently. This harkens back to the early Gracie challenges or even beyond that. When the USC was first formed and the Gracies were trying to basically get an American version of the Gracie challenge out and on television and pay-per-view, they did not want time limits. They wanted it unlimited time because that is what the whole thing was about. Grappling until you beat the other person into submission, whether that was through exhaustion or technique. You went until the other person gave up or submitted. When, when the UFC started going into, uh, to try to make this MMA thing more mainstream, they started having to add rules and timeframes. The Gracies bowed out, they sold their share and they got out of the UFC. So now we come back full circle We've been doing all these different versions of rules and now we're coming back to, hey, let's do these uh, unlimited matches. Let's do these no time limit matches, submission only. And these guys are gonna roll until someone submits. The question is, is this the future of the sport of jujitsu? Not the martial art, but the sport. To what Chael Sonnen is saying, that's cool, it's unique, it's fun, but is it sustainable? Who, you know, who is gonna sit there and there are some of us, guys, we will sit there and watch every minute of a three hour plus match or two hours or hour 45 minutes. But even I didn't sit through all those matches. I went back and watched like a half hour, 45 minutes of highlights. I don't know if you can create entertainment that way. And that's, I think, what Chael is saying. That's kind of a fringe thing for the hardcore fans. It's a unique, fun thing, but it, it's, it's not going to be kind of a mainstream thing. You got a business here. You ain't got a very good one, but you've got one. Now, if people could, could find a way to work together, and by working together, you just got to have it over the same rules. If you do an event, whatever your event is called, that it has their own rules, and you can't have a sport that way. You can't have a ranking system that way. You can't have journalists and media and people getting behind it and breakdowns. You can't have those things unless you have the same rules any basketball court, any gym in the world. You walk into a junior high, you walk into a college, walk into club fitness, walk into NCAA, junior college, NAI, any way you want to do it. You get into a basketball court, they're going to do four quarters. Basket is going to be two points. You go to the foul line, you get a couple shots. You're outside the three-point line, you get three. I mean, do you understand? It's the same rules. You could be a six-year-old child. You could be in the NBA finals. It's the same rules. Everybody understands it. When you go into grappling and you don't have the same rules, it's one of these really tough positions. 
He's trying to say it'll never be a sport, but that's a blanket word. It'll never be a sport. I consider it to be a sport now. But what he's saying is that under so many different promotions, promoters, uh, associations, and so forth, everyone has their own set of rules when you're competing. So it can never be a mainstream sport that laymans could potentially come in and watch and enjoy and understand because the rules will keep shifting depending on what you're watching, which association or promotion you're watching, and what the rule sets are for that specific match or those matches. He actually makes a fair point talking about how any other sport in the world, you know the rules. So I get what he's saying. And he's not wrong. I, you know, at one point he gets real like aggressive and says, you just don't want to hear it. And maybe some people don't, but he's not wrong. Now, this is all in the context of him saying that it can never be a mainstream sport. Because again, I'm, I'm going to argue with him on this, that it's, he's saying it's not a sport. I don't know if you refer to it as a sport, guys, or a martial art. I kind of refer to it as a, a martial art, but then I also refer to sport jujitsu as sport jujitsu. So I do refer to it as a sport. I think the people who compete in these uh, big name competitions, they are athletes. So again, I consider it a sport, but he doesn't consider it a sport because it's not a mainstream sport. There are certain like-minded things that sports have, right? I don't get to choose, guys. I don't get to throw something across the room right now and tell you it was an airplane. I don't get to do that. There are certain things that have to meet a definition to qualify as an aircraft. There is no sport anywhere in the world that doesn't have time. It's one of the predominant functions. Sports are based off of some kind of a point system inside of a confined time. It is not important that you have more points than your opponent. It is important that you have more points than your opponent when time runs out. So if you don't have time, you now don't have a sport. You have something else. But if you change it and tell me that a match is now three minutes, we're having a different conversation. Or if you change it and you tell me some great nemesis of Jordan's, but they're going to go for 15 minutes. You've changed. This just got weird. There has to be a set time. Is it a sport? If you don't have a time limit, do you have a sport? If you don't have boundaries, do you have a sport? If you don't have rules, if you don't have a scoring system, if you don't have judges in place, do you have a sport? You've got to do X amount more to this person in this time frame, or you're not a sport. And if grappling wants to go do these, hey, good for them. Go right on ahead. I watched it and I'm glad that I did. But do you know who's better? You're going to come to the conclusion to Gordon. You're going to come to the conclusion because he's got his hand raised. Is that how it works? I had teammates. Boy, they wanted to go an hour. Call it grind match. That's not what we're doing. Now or ever. Wrestled a thousand wrestling matches. Not one of them was scheduled for an hour. So what difference does it make if you had 100 points on me and I only had 30 on you in the hour? If I had 20 points on you and you had three on me in seven minutes, which is how this contest, I beat you. You did not beat me. You changed the rules to something else, but it comes back to me throwing something across the room. Do you have a sport? I'm asking the question. I'm proposing both sides to it. I'm telling you why this is headed nowhere. And again, he goes on to reiterate that you just can't really call it a sport if you don't have the same rules across all the different competitions. Now, I, I gotta say, he's actually right there. Even when I have my students competing in local tournaments, I have to like look up what the rules are for that tournament, or if they're going to do something that's under IBJJF, or um, one of my students is doing a, a pro, a regional pro Brazilian Jiu Jitsu match. And then who's the governing body for if a, if a BJJ athlete is a pro or an amateur? It's all on the promotion and whatever association or governing body oversees that. It could be argued that that's the same for boxing. That's why there's so many belts out there. Boxing does have an, an overarching general set of rules. And I think jiu-jitsu really needs to settle into something like that. So like EBI, Eddie Bravo's uh, Invitational, like there's... Uh, it's submission only, but if you, the time runs out, then uh, you go into these overtime rounds. Then, of course, one of the biggest things, the holy grail of like grappling or, grap or for grapplers, the ADCC. You've got IBJJF. They all have their own rules. Man, these organizations, it's, as a, a professor in jiu-jitsu, it's beyond just rules for the, for the competitors. They have rules for even the school to be able to have their students participate. Then you've got regional like pro shows and you've got smaller competitions and grappling industry fight to win there's like all these different which are great i love that there's so many out there because 
students of jiu-jitsu can compete anywhere at any time in their journey. And this is exceptional. But again, not there is no one set of rules that goes across all these organizations from down here to up here. So another reason he's saying it can't be called a sport is because again, there has to be, specific, like I just said, as far as the overarching kind of basic set of rules or like a, you know, a bare bones, like a, the skeleton of, of competition. And then you kind of flesh it out however you want within these different organizations. So one of his key arguments is that in order to truly make it a, a fair competition, there needs to be a time limit. A time limit basically ensures a couple of things, which I have to say, I agree with this too. It ensures that, that the people fight within that time frame and whoever wins within whatever rules are set, whatever these unified rules become, the person who wins within that time frame wins. This way you can have an event because you have set time frames and whoever wins, wins. You move on to the next match, boom, 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 boom. Now you have a full event. Now that's being done. You can watch any grappling competition and most of them have time limits. But again, their rules shift within those time limits. If you're going like submission only, that's why people don't like the time frame because when you're going submission only, you don't always get that finish. So how do you fix that? Again, EBI did the whole overtime thing, but now if you constantly having matches going into overtime, you're changing the length of your event, the duration. So you can't grow this into a mainstream thing if you're constantly, if those things are unpredictable. And the last thing, he kind of keeps talking about how the most boring thing about jujitsu is the grappling. The worst part of a grappling event is the grappling. That is the absolute worst part. I think that's very dismissive and he's just being Chell Sonny. He's being loud and obnoxious about that. But what he, I think he's what he's trying to say is if, if again, if you're not a, a deep fan of grappling, you know, watching that go on for an extended time is boring if you're not into it. The people who are into it will love it. But how big of an audience are you drawing with that? Again, I feel like jujitsu has grown plenty, has grown a lot, and it continues to grow. But will it ever be mainstream? And do you want it to be? I think for the athletes, for the, for the grapplers, that'd be cool to see them start getting uh, what I feel they deserve for their training and what they do. As a professor, as a school owner, of course I would love it to become a big thing, uh, much bigger than it even is now to grow the community, to grow my community and grow the community as a whole. But what Chael Sonnen is saying is, is pretty spot on. You're, you're gonna have to find some way for all these organizations to work together and agree upon one unified set of rules. One of the things Chael Sonnen was talking about, it's gonna have to take someone who's, who can put their money behind it and get all these organizations and get it to all come together. If that's even something that somebody wants to do, because it's gonna, it's gonna take a lot of effort and a lot of money. And does jujitsu as a martial art and a sport, does it have that kind of financial backing right now? I'll tell you the one rule set that I think may work and the one organization I think that's doing a great job. And if you've been watching my channel, you'll see is I'm a huge fan of one fighting championship. Number one, I love how they're organizing and which grapplers they're assigning. I love how they're organizing their matches and they're mixing it into their cards, which is awesome. And I love the pay. They are paying these grapplers like real fighters, giving them purses that they have never seen um, in the grappling competitions that they have done. This is huge. And then on the end of it, I love their rule set. They have a one 10 minute, which is not unique, a 10 minute time limit. And it's whoever goes for the most submissions, right? You either finish by submission or you make the most submission attempts. As simple as that sounds, you know, somebody could come in and shred it and tear this apart because that's the problem, right? We're all like defending the rule sets that we like and we believe. We got to come together with something. I don't know, man. The, the grappling matches I've seen under 1FC, I feel like that's the way to go. That's just my opinion. Of course, other people are going to have their opinions as to what rule set they feel would be the best one to be the unified rules for sport jujitsu. But again, until some people sit down and have serious conversation, it's just not going to get bigger. And then again, it's gotten very big as it is. It's just splintered off into these other organizations and associations. And the grapplers don't have a problem jumping and competing in these different pockets for their notoriety. Um, <laughs> and there's not, I mean, mostly notoriety, there isn't a lot of money. Again, I feel like 1FC is the only one really trying to turn these guys into professional athletes that get professional athlete money. All right, so at the end of all this, um, I say this. It's aggressive what Chayla is saying but he's not wrong. And what he is arguing, 
that it can never be a mainstream sport. I don't agree with him that it is not currently a sport. It is just not a mainstream sport. And it can never be a mainstream sport without coming up with a unified set of rules and time limits and all these different things. And I feel like he's absolutely right in that argument. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you enjoy the content, please be sure to like and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video.